testing. One, two, three, four. It's one of my favorite songs by LaBelle. It's called A Man in a Trench Coat. Somebody's stalking you. LaBelle is the group that Patti LaBelle was in before she went solo, featuring Nona Hendrix and Sarah Dash. And I thought I would tell just a quick little story. So, um, you're going to be doing your projects. Uh, we went around the room last class in our music and interactive music video course at U Albany, and each student shared what they're working on. There were some really amazing projects unfolding, and uh, I'm also working on my own project. And I was looking at creating a little um, playlist that has um, just a few videos to help you all think about um, and remember to cite and work with the products of girls and women in learning, searching to learn how to teach yourself how to make a supercut satire video, a fan video that is an essay, a vlog. Um, I would like to encourage you to always use um, creative content that's made by girls and women, uh, particularly girls and women of color. Uh, I would like you to do the same, pardon the little bleep bleep notification, uh, I'd like you to do the same with the sources that you find. See if you can make the sources that you reference be written primarily by people of color or women of color. Um, if you're doing something on masculinity um, and you're a man of color, then see if you can find works by men of color that write about issues of feminism or issues of uh, representation in music video or interactivity or technology. I can name you a few. Andre Brock is a wonderful scholar at University of Michigan who studies interactive media and social media. There is Sophia Noble, and there is um, Lisa Nakamura, who does online racism. Um, and then uh, there's not as many people writing about YouTube, per se, that are people of color. I think I'm one of the primary people. Um, so I just put together a little playlist of four videos, and it occurred to me, pow, I had this idea, oh my god, uh, Supercuts actually have a history in a feminist fan fiction phenomenon called bidding. Um, and uh, I found a podcast, I mean, it's not a podcast, um, a blog on the evolution of the supercut. It's on a blog that is called We Love Video. Um, and the uh, URL is Brink jm.wordpress.com. It's somebody's personal blog. Um, they said that they had run, ran an email list called We Love Video, and each email is a collection of videos that they found interesting and inspiring, and lists like that. Um, so this is about the supercut, and it says the first use of the word supercut came in a blog by Andy Bale in 2008. He was reflecting on the fan-made montage of every instance of a word, what, in uh, the show Lost. Um, he said that the video had, quote, started me thinking about the genre of video meme where some obsessive compulsive superfan collects every phrase, action, or cliche from an episode or an entire series of their favorite show, film, game, um, show, film, or game into a single massive video montage for lack of a better name, let's call them supercuts. And although the word, he continues, the blogger here continues, although the word is quite new, it turns out supercuts have a long history. In 1936, avant-garde filmmaker Joseph Cornell made a 10-minute film which consisted entirely of clips of actress Rose Hobart from a 1931 B-movie called East of Bor Borneo. Apparently in the audience of one viewing Apparently, in the audience of one viewing was Salvador Dali, who angrily knocked over the projector, claiming he'd had the same idea. Quote, he stole it from my subconscious, end quote, he said to have shouted. The modern supercut also has its roots in the vidding culture that grew up around TV fan conventions in the 1970s. Enthusiasts would remix footage from shows like Star Trek and add music to show, for example, the true intensely sexual nature of the relationship between Kirk and Spock. Closer. 
uh, T. Jonesy and Killa. Oh, this is a screenshot, sorry. Um, ignore that. <laughs> so, so yeah, supercuts, one of my favorite genres of the video on the internet. They can easily be boring, but when done well, they can be anything from satirical to beautiful. They've always been influential culturally, inspiring adverts, music and art installations. And so here are some of my favorite broken down into categories. There's a supercut of The Big Lebowski called Every Single Dude on YouTube, one on Scarpa Scarface called Every Fuck, <laughs> one on Star Wars, Every Lightsaber Ignition and Retraction. Um, there's supercut act and actors, Every No, No, No by Shia LaBeouf, uh, Every Bone that Steven Seagal has ever broken, Every Arnold Scream from Every Arnold Movie. <laughs> Um, here I Come, a walking towards the camera shot montage. A um, hundred greatest one-liners after the kill um, from Burger Fiction. Glove Actually, or Love Actually, an ode to cinema's greatest slaps. Um, a supercut that is about satire is one called Cassette, uh, Cassette Boy, Cameron's Conference Rap. Um, the uh, YouTuber is Cassette Boy. Um, so it goes on and on and on, and then it says, uh, where's the part about fan bidding? So they, they don't mention, oh, so Supercut Music. Green Day's Basket Case, sung by 109 movies. Um, the World of Wall Street Chest Thump Mix. Um, it's Eclectic Method Chest Thump Mix. Uh, they can do it with art, a supercut with an essay, a supercut essay. Um, and finally, although this is from Tony um, Zhu, is an essay rather than a supercut, and I couldn't resist including it. And it's called In Praise of Chairs. And so I'm gonna send you guys this um, blog so you can read more about it. But the thing that um, I kind of skipped over, yeah, so what's not mentioned when it says that the modern supercut also has roots in bidding culture is that bidding culture is a feminist, all-female practice that dates back to the 1970s. Um, slight over, like, why wouldn't you mention that? It seems odd that you wouldn't mention that women started the practice of supercuts. Um, so it's like women invented the fandom that led to the Beatles, women drive traffic to hip hop videos, women drive tra traffic to rock and roll and country videos, women run the music business from behind the scenes, pardon the pun, because you know I study twerking. So I just want you to remember, always cite your sources. Always remember that women have made a much more um, substantial impact on the media that we're looking at on YouTube, and they continue to do so. Um, and remember that whatever you have to say can be said in a supercut, because it has roots in bidding. Okay? Bye.